The druids of the Scottish Highland inspired domains of forlorn, guard their groves and what grows there with ferocity, only because so little of it remains. Eschewing fruits like pears and apples, what grows on this tree is something far more horrific. The horrid abomination known as the Death's Head Tree. A mature Death's Head Tree bears a strange and terrible fruit. A waxy looking, slack jawed, decapitated head. These heads can be from any different type of humanoid and more often than not, several different types will hang from one tree. Unlike normal fruit though, when they ripen, they detach from their perch and float aloft in the air on a gaseous cloud that they excrete from their rotting orifices. Once free from their moorings, they will go off and seek any warm-blooded creature in which to plant seeds of their own. But we'll come back to that. Wandering around the wilderness, you would be best to steer clear of these abominations. But how will you know to do that? What exactly do they look like? Well, it bears resemblance to a 15 to 20 foot tall weeping willow with a few differences. Its branches are much thicker. After all, it has to hold aloft up to 16 rotten smelling severed humanoid heads. Its bark is brittle, dark, and foul smelling. If you get close enough, you will notice bright red lines running vertically along its trunk. And that's for a good reason. You see, it isn't water that's needed for it to grow. It's blood. Blood is what causes its seeds to germinate. Blood is what allows it to grow. Blood is what sprouts its fruits. For this reason, these abominations are usually found on long abandoned battlefields where evil temples once stood or any location of mass sacrifices. It's possible even to find them tucked away in the basement of some Chateau de Evil, taking up root in the damp blood-soaked soil of some Dark Lord's torture chamber. Other than being able to scare the life out of you, how can they harm you? Well, like most carnivorous plants, they will act accordingly when something they perceive as threatening wanders within its range, or is drawn to it. The animated heads have just enough limited intelligence left in them to call out into the darkness. Its unsuspecting victims will hear a soft, help, help, carried along in the air, drawing them forward to investigate the source of the pleas. Once they do, they will have no issue identifying the heads as monstrous, but by then, it will be too late. While the heads themselves cannot move, the branches can, and they will. Striking out, each head will bite, causing damage and trying to plant the seed into the victim upon a successful attack. They can also spit the seeds from as far away as 30 feet. But here's the kicker. The seeds have a natural antiseptic. That means whether they are injected via a bite or from a distance, the victim most likely will not notice them after the initial sting. Forgetting about them will lead to the seeds taking root and after the initial 24 hours, it will begin to sprout, sending shoots and roots throughout the body, causing extreme pain and inflicting damage. Panic will begin to grip the host as they search frantically for the source of the agonizing affliction. Removing the seed now will deal a considerable amount of damage, both mentally and physically. But if not removed within 72 hours, the spruits will have caused enough pain and damage to cause the victim to lose consciousness. No longer able to even attempt to remove the sprouts, they will grow unchecked eating away at the organs and tissues, using what's left of the internal cavity as a germinating pod, twisting and growing till eventually its roots break from the body and plants itself into the ground. Growth will then slow down significantly once it has taken root into the soil. It will be another 50 or 60 years before it'll mature to the point it can grow fruit on its own. 
Until its branches thicken enough to sustain the weight of its own heads, it will look almost identical to a growing weeping willow. Only the most trained observer will be able to tell the difference. There is only one limit to the number of death's head tree that can grow in any given area, and it is the amount of blood that has been spilled. Theoretically, there could be one for every corpse. In fact, it's not uncommon to see an entire forest of saplings spring up in a few days after a major battle. Of course, until they reach maturity, they can be killed or uprooted as easily as any other plant. They also tend to sink their roots into each other, attempting to steal the other's lifeblood and grow stronger until eventually only one tree is left within 15 feet, making a mature death's head tree really hard to find. Of course, until they reach maturity, they can be killed or uprooted as easily as any other plant. Once it matures, it can produce a crop of heads every 24 months, growing from the size of a walnut to full grown in a maximum of six days, at which point they begin to call out to new prey, speaking in the language of whatever head is speaking the words. It's believed that the devil's fruit resembles the face of the blood that nurtured it. It's possible, considering it's been heard to call out many languages, that the heads are undead manifestation of a particular individual. However, most people believe it's mere mimicry. In spite of how it looks, the tree is not considered undead, at least not while the fruit is still attached to the root. Only once the heads are aloft floating on its own funk are they considered undead and can be turned as such. If you miss your opportunity though, the heads can smell a warm-blooded creature from up to a mile away and travel 20 miles or more in search of a host. Once it finds one, it will spit up to six seeds, engage in bite attacks, and shock the living hell out of some creature until it is either killed or drops dead from exhaustion. Living for a thousand years or more, perhaps the only way to truly know the age of a tree is to cut it down and to count the rings, tying it back to either the last time a known battle had been fought there, or there was some sort of mass sacrifice. But you'd be hard pressed to get somebody to volunteer for such a task. At least somebody knows the true nature of the tree. <laughs> quest idea. <laughs> Speaking of quest ideas, since the tree is magical in nature and possesses a natural magic resistance, its wood is highly sought after. I can imagine a group of young adventurers striking out to the location of an ancient battleground on search of a tree in order to create a fire resistant shield or a boat and able to sail on a river of fire. We're gonna need a bigger tree. <laughs> Remember, the death's head tree grows anywhere. One may be found growing in the stones of an abandoned ruined temple or an ancient battlefield among the rusted swords and picked clean bones of the people and creatures that fought there. The druids of the Scottish Highland themed Domain of Forlore may have been the first to experience the death's head tree, growing in place of the great green groves that once they guarded, but they are by far not the only ones. Just pray that you never hear that soft whisper of at your table.